are here with another round of What's on Your Pedal Board, and today it is Jamie Stillman. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is uh, quite the treat, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Appreciate awesome. it, man. For those of you who have been living under the rock for the last 20 years or whatever, uh, <laughs> Jamie is, uh, he's Earthquaker Devices, let's just, uh, he's the mastermind, the uh, the guru, the, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll call yeah. it a founder, pedal designer. Founder, yeah. pedal designer, et it's cetera, a team et, of cetera et cetera, et yeah. cetera, yeah. Well, of course, always <laughs> is, right? Especially when you get to the size you guys are at, which is, uh, you know, good size company, man, making a lot of stuff, making a lot of yeah, great innovative of, stuff. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So, um, but that being said, what a lot of people may not know is that you're a guitar player as well. Yes. Primarily, that's still how I think of myself. Amateur, pedal maker, dumb guitarist, <laughs> and rock that, music. That's it, yeah. man. That's it. And the name of your band is? Relaxer. Relaxer. It's and so, you know, we were talking just a second ago about how you built, you, you don't really build pedal boards very often. No. This is your new build, mm -hmm. right? And it's, and it's primarily for the band, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I built this for my band, Relaxer. Uh, and... Prior to this, my board stayed the same for almost three years. We did have a pandemic oh, yeah. in there, yeah, so right. it didn't get a lot of use. <laughs> right. It's primarily right. for like live shows, but it was a much smaller, compact board. I find a lot of times I'm not really, uh, I'm not changing the sounds up too much. Like using a lot of like delay or yeah. reverb or pitch shifters or things like that. I'm usually just stacking gain in that band. That's kind of like what I started doing, like kind of like really refining it all. And this is a brand new pedal board in an attempt to get me to like get out of that box. Like <laughs> kind of going back to like all my favorite effects. Yeah. And you know, I think I do this every time I build a new pedal board, which is the like, wouldn't it be cool if I had this? And then eventually I'm gonna take half of the stuff off and like go back down to a small board that's manageable. <laughs> yeah. But you know, but it's good though if you start with the big thing and then chip it away, kind of sculpting of sorts. Yeah, you know, yeah that's that kinda how like I figure out either one to kind of play it a little bit different or yeah. And you know, like new things to do, or right. this is a bad idea. I yeah. only have so much I can pay attention to. <laughs> Man. Oh, yeah, or the other thing, like I've I've done this. This is my recent build has this where it's like, let's step on that. You know what? No, let's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely have some of that on here yeah. for sure this time. <laughs> I'm using some things that I've never never tried before. Cool. This is a three day old pedal board. Cool. Three days. Get mm. out of here, man. That's mm. great. That is great. I love that. And a road case. And a road so, case. Yes. Yeah. So you're ready, man. You're getting mm -hmm. ready. Yeah. Especially with this guy. Oh my yeah, gosh, the Model man. T. I love this amp. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. It sounds really great. Cool. Let's. Wait, okay. So where does this signal originate? Where? <laughs> what's our first in? So my first in is the Swiss things. I go right into that. Uh, this pedal is the maybe the most selfish pedal that I made for Earthquaker. Like this is totally <laughs> something that I needed, and I was like, hopefully other people understand this thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, so man. this is kind of like you know I when I first designed this, I, I would really use those loops, like mm -hmm. turn on multiple effects at the same time, but. Right. We stopped playing some of those songs, so I didn't need to do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of the tap dancing. Yeah, right. So I pretty much just leave everything on exactly how it is, like loop one and loop okay. two. I run the tuner out into this pitch black tuner, there and then I use volume pedal just to mute the signal when I'm tuning. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's great, man. Yeah, I mean, having a good interface is just really critical. Yeah. People don't really think about that too much, because it's one of those sort of unsexy things that doesn't yeah, make like, a lot of racket or do anything it's not, cool. It's not but, that man. exciting, and it's usually really expensive. Yeah. Like, when you start going down that yeah. rabbit hole, yeah. you're like, do I need And then you got to make a place thing? for it on your board, yeah. and you kind of look at it and yeah. go, wait a minute, we it's got cables coming room. every direction. Yeah. And, then, and then once you use it, you go, how did I live without it? Yeah, exactly. You know, and this is kind of I tried a lot of things before I had built myself just like you know a, a bank of just switches where all yeah. the pedals were in it. Right. I was like, well, that's what's the use of this? Like I could just reach over that and turn the pedals on and yeah. off. Yeah. Then I bought like an elaborate like kind of MIDI switcher type mm -hmm. thing, which I'm not really big in that world, so I don't I don't know much about it. And it was incredibly frustrating. And I returned it, <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I'll just be a regular person and use these pedals." And I still needed something, like yeah. at the very least, like a fail-safe. If yep. any patch cable went haywire, which they do, yeah. kind of an active guitarist, yeah. then I could just pull it all out yep. and just kind of go guitar in. Yep. So that's what 
you know, I kind of got working on this, this uh, Swiss things um, to take care of it. Yeah, and well, the tuner mute's great too because then you, then it takes the tuner out of the yeah, actual signal path. Yeah, it's, you know, it's path, like one less is, thing to be, to be yeah. in the way. And it also kind of makes it so I think I tune a lot more often because we have two guitar players in the mm -hmm. band and a lot of the songs are really like long, kind of epic-y things. So yeah. the guitars will fade in and out. Right. So I'll be able to just like kind of fade out, tune real quick, fade mm -hmm. back in as opposed to just like the hard stop, which yeah. can be like, you know, kind of jarring. Right, if right. You're doing well, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's just two guitars, and all of a sudden you've got tons of guitar, and then you've got yeah. half of the half of that amount. You yeah. know, where you jump out. Yeah, that's that's interesting. You say that because I use the volume pedal the same way. Just leave the tuner on, volume pedal to mute. Mm -hmm. You know, and then all of a sudden you're playing along and you see your G strings just a little flat, mm, 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 and then you're back yeah. in. You know, it's a second the, and a yeah, half. It's weird. There's just something about using the volume pedal yeah. to like do the mute for yeah. tuning that I. It's like such a s split second thing, but it's so different than just turning the tuner on. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Yeah, or you know, we're just dealing with the guitar being kind of semi out of tune for half the song. Right. It's yeah. Like, and then you're, <laughs> you know, and with you know, working at a club, you know, somebody opens the door, it's freezing outside, a bunch of cold air comes flying in, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. right? You we know, do, where like, more people cram into this small space and it gets hotter and hotter in yeah. there. Yeah. You do what I do, just flail around and beat your guitar on things <laughs> and then it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then that just takes care of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So out of that, obviously, into the tuner and the volume pedal, but those are kind of side chains. Yeah, right? those are like side chains yeah. right off right, right off the input. Right. And, and so the so the first so the first proper pedal is the first proper pedal is this noise gate, this round oh, cool. G eight noise gate, which oh, this is okay. new to me. Yeah. Um bought it on sweetwater.com. Imagine that. Mm. Uh, you can do that sort of thing, you know. <laughs> at least I'm pretty sure I did. I'm not like terribly familiar with all the noise gates on the market, yeah, but right. I tried the right. NS2 years ago, and yeah. then I tried the the, the decimator, mm -hmm. which was it was nice. But this one so far is pretty great. Like I can't tell it's in the chain at all. Like it, I don't. I'm still working on dialing it in, and I got to use it live and kind of see how it reacts in those situations and really fine tune it. But right now, like the the uh, the action is kind of abrupt, but the fact that I can't really tell it's there is is great. Yeah, that's a that's a good feeling. That's really what you're looking for is that transparency and mm -hmm. whatever that is, right? If you're like I'm the kind of guy who like would hold a long note and want to yeah. see where the fade is and maybe it, you know, but if you're if you're looking for something that's a little sharper, mm -hmm. you know, it's just it depends on what your scenario is that yeah. works for you. But yeah, man, that's great. That's yeah. great to hear. And I typically like, you know, my my standard style of playing guitar I use like a lot of like open strings and chords yeah. and stuff like that and I want things to ring out as long as they can possibly ring out but I also use I play really loud and yeah. sometimes I use a lot of gain so I, I do want it to be quiet in between and that's just been like a constant struggle and I'll deal with the noise like I, yeah. it doesn't bother me it's the feedback that yeah. kind of drives me crazy yeah, right. <laughs> uh, which I like I love feedback when it's like you want it to happen when but it's like controlled when, yeah, yeah when you don't want it to happen it's the most annoying uh, yeah thing. it's a nightmare man and yeah. uh Relaxer over the years has just become more and more of like a bonehead, like riff heavy band from this like long atmospheric, like cinematic, like 15 minute long drawn out songs and stuff <laughs> to kind of like more of a Black Sabbath-y like riff oriented band. Yeah. So there's a lot of stopping and starting like quick mutes and things like that. And like I was doing all these tap dances to turn off like a fuzz pedal and a distortion. I was like, I just, I'll just get a noise gate. Yeah, like, just, just figure just, it out. Exactly, man, to help me make, you know, because that's that's the intention with those riffs. That's a, that's what gives the push and pull on the riffs anyway. Yeah, it's like, di the it's silence, like dynamics you know? yeah. of, it, of it all. Um, and it's like, that, that has become like super important to me, like especially when things are just like riff heavy and kind yeah. of like, hammering you over the yeah. head it's like yeah. gotta be some dynamic somewhere so like the stopping is starting yeah is that it. is the dynamic <laughs> man yeah yeah well and again at volume you yeah know, it's a whole different world at it volume is, yeah so out of the out of the incredibly transparent gate into <laughs> <laughs> so i have all these pedals in the loop of this gate so it goes in okay. and out of, in and out of the the gate straight to the send and return of the um Loop one of the Swiss things. Oh, so nice. that's nice. the only thing that's in there. And then it goes life pedal plumes. Mm -hmm. This is a Hizumitas prototype. 
Okay. And then this is a fuzz pedal I made for myself years ago that like every time I pull it out is a different kind of pedal. Like <laughs> it's, done, it's supposed to just have this like mess of harmonics, this kind of harshy yeah. square wave fuzz and it did this really great gating Velcro type tone. Mm -hmm. Now it's doing some bizarre like kind of like almost like short flange reverb thing that I can't really <laughs> figure out why it's happening. <laughs> but I'm gonna leave it alone because it's, go with it. it was pretty cool. Uh, wow! And then those run out to this like chain of octave and harmonizer yeah, pedals, which yeah, is like this is the goofy part where I'm like I don't know if this is what I'm thinking here, but I got it's like having a piano that you can just run yeah. through. So it runs out into that drop, right? And these two ricochets, one set to go down, one set to go up, and then this quintessence, which I use as a harmonizer yeah. for for just like one part of one song, but in this world of things, like octaves, like I love this stuff. Yeah. And uh, there's there's not many of them on the market. That even have any kind of vibe at all. Yeah. I, I'm, I use a pitchfork, same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm just using one, but I'm constantly tweaking it going, okay, I want a blend, I want a two octaves, I want a one octave, I want up and down at the same time. Yeah. I want, I'm constantly, yeah, I can, that's, I that's, can see that. That's kind of why I ended up here, is because yeah. like, at the very least, I, I want a sub octave and a dry mm -hmm. signal. And I want to be able to do like kind of a pitch bend up and down, or just yeah. straight octave up and down. Yeah, like and be able to bring them in and out. And this this is you know just for harmony. I recorded you know a guitar a solo that had two parts. So it was yeah, like, got to figure out some way to right. do it. Right. I've gone through a bunch of pedals to try to do the harmonizer tone and like no kidding. And that's the one. This huh? is the one that I like the most. Nice. Like just due to to how compact it is. Yeah. Um, but I've tried like, you know, just a regular like a you know, the the very first whammy, like the one that's really hard to get. Yeah. I have that. It sounds great. I'm not putting on my pedal board. This particular pedal, the Digitech drop, as far as I'm concerned, is like the best sub octave pedal there is. I don't know what it's not like there's something terribly unique or thrilling about it, but it just blends really well. It's really realistic. There's like no latency, no weird warble or glitches mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and these ricochets kind of have a vibe to them, and they yeah. do remind me of some somewhat of the very first whammy, whammy pedal. Yeah. Um, you might be asking what I'm asking in my own head, which is why the hell don't we make an octave pedal? <laughs> The that was actually the next question. Yeah. So yeah, so because apparently you're having kind of a fascination with octave. Yeah, right and I always have, great, right? and we've made uh, a couple different yeah. octave pedals. Like we have the organizer, which yeah. is more like vibe oriented. It's yeah. more like not like a straight. It's probably about as close as to like a like a pog style effect that yeah. we have. But right. it's like there's more aimed at like making the guitar sound like a guitorgan, which is a weird. Yeah old instrument right, that somebody right. hacked together in their garage, I think, in Texas. <laughs> uh, you know, something like that, mixed with like an actual organ, or we had a pedal called the Pitch Bay that did all kinds of harmonies, but I just haven't made a good one. I gotta be honest with you, like, <laughs> you like these better. Like, the technology that was available to us, like, isn't the best for doing this kind of stuff mm -hmm. and it's like kind of exceeds my knowledge a little bit of things <laughs> and it's been like low on the list of like well i don't i don't you know i don't know if i'm gonna learn everything i need to know to build this thing and i don't know if it's worth like going hire, down that rabbit you know, like hole hiring for the end, for, like an engineer yeah. to like help me th through the whole thing you know mm -hmm. for the end result for the right end, for the yeah. end result because you know it's like people, there's not that many, but people like the ones that, that are out there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I haven't come up with like an idea that has blown my own mind yet yeah. like about something that's like different <laughs> that's enough. Fun. That's funny. But like, it is on my list. It's like, these are, this is something so basic that like I want to do, but I want to nail it. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. want to do another one of the like, like the vibe ones, because I think we've done that. And I think we've done a really good job with, yeah. that, with those two pedals. But yeah. I just want to make like the a bread perfect, and butter. A perfect like, this is it. Yeah. It tracks great. It sounds yeah. nice. It blends in, and like yeah. we just haven't haven't gotten to that point yet. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, because you know the pitchfork obviously is very pog like, and it and it does have some weird anomalies in it that you just kind of have to deal with. Yeah, you know? I, that's what. And so I just embrace the goofiness, and it yeah. is what it is. You know, but yeah. 
I just like because it's kind of Swiss Army knife in a way, it you is. know, sort of kind of does a little bit yeah. of everything. But that's what but, I was I was yeah. using before, like on the last pedal board. Yeah, I was using that the newest Pitchfork, the one with the two switches and yeah. all the presets and everything. Yeah. because I just kind of preset all of this stuff. Right. right. But at some point, I wasn't. It wasn't. I just it wasn't, wasn't for the me. thing, man. Yeah. yeah. Not like doing it, the thing. it just didn't react how I how I liked these. Mm. Like this drop is like pretty predictable all yeah. the time and is really natural sounding. Yeah. Mm. How how far do you go? What's your like setting on the drops? On the drop, I'm just uh, octave, octave one below okay. plus, oh, just plus one dry. Octave. Okay. Yeah. Again, I just I appreciate the fact that you have four. <laughs> Harmony pedals there. I think yeah, that's. Right there. I, I think that speaks volumes in and of itself, man. <laughs> it's like how much real estate and the fact that they're on the front row. Yeah, just, you know. You know that's by uh, design. Like they just happen to sit just low enough yeah. behind those pedals. Like I got right. lucky that like you, you can, can still get over it. Turn yeah. that stuff on yep. without bumping those. And then, so I'm guessing is everything else in loop two? Then I'm assuming. Yeah, pretty much everything else okay. is in loop two. So. I guess I, I kind of go into like I kind of bypass this life pedal plumes and all this stuff. Yeah, right, like this, right. the the plumes and uh, the the Hizumita since it came out have kind of just been mainstays on the yeah, board. Nice. And I've always used. We used to have a pedal called the Speaker Cranker. It was like mm -hmm. a one knob overdrive, mm -hmm. and then it uh, we discontinued it and came out with a Special Cranker. Uh, Very nice pedal, by the way. Thank all you. those are man. Love actually really love the plumes too. Thank you. Thank I you, do, man. Yeah, so I use the plume for like all like kind of like my main like kind of tight distorted yeah. tone, and uh, I was using the speaker cranker forever. Like that was always on my board until this version of it. Like I always try to take it off. Somehow I know it's just going to end up it's co <laughs> coming back on here. But <laughs> something else is going out. That's going in. Yeah, what I was yeah. using it for in this setup was kind of like to add to the plumes to make it like a little bit of a fuzzier overdrive. Like nothing you oh, want to okay. do like tight chords with, but like yeah. stuff that just kind of sounds has like an interesting decay to it. Yeah. And I kind of you know, I really like the way the life pedal sounds. Uh, it, it it works really well for a lot of different styles of music. I feel like just like adjusting the gain a little bit. Yeah. And it kind of adds that like fuzzy drive character that I liked. So I'm like, why not? It's new. I'll throw it on there. Plus, I get this octave up. This analog yeah, octave right, up. Right. You get a whole new yeah, set of yeah, flavors yeah. there, yeah. man. Yeah. So I, I replaced the uh, speaker cranker with with that one. Yeah. So dang. Okay. First, first and, board in a while without that on it. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Tool C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And two fuzz pedals, of course. Two because, fuzz pedals. Because yeah. why not? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. then this weird one. This one comes and goes because sometimes I don't know, it just seems to have a mind of its own. It's, <laughs> it gets too out there on yeah, its this, own. This weird pedal. Loop two yeah. kind of follows this order. It goes into the space bender in okay. the rainbow machine. Grand Orbiter and Avalanche run all the way over to that Ghost Echo and then back. And then I'm running out of output A into the, the Centaur, which is new too. Like I used to have this kind of more on the front end of the chain. Now I'm putting it at the end to kind of just boost the, do like what I like, or you know, ha let it do what I like that it does. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little bit better without having to go through all of these other pedals. Oh, so just, I, I use it to kind of brighten up the signal and drive, and drive at the, the front of the, the amp. Front, front end of the amp. Yeah, kind of how everybody uses it. Right. Um, this is a new, newish thing for me. The Centaur. I kind of got into it like a year ago. After yeah. like, I've owned two originals in like the last 10 years just because uh, the first one I bought was still when they were like affordable. Yeah. Now I don't know what you know, sell a child to, yeah, to a kidney maybe, you know, to get one. Like yeah. I don't know who is buying these things, but like yeah. uh, I didn't bond with it in like, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll sell it. And then like it started to just gain more popularity. I was like, why, why, like, what is it about this thing? Am I missing something? So I bought another one for what I would call a significant amount of money, but still not the crazy amount now. And I just held on to that for a long time. Yeah. Brought it to a couple shows. I was like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Not Sold doing it. Thing. Yeah. And then like almost immediately it was like, ah, I know why people use these and how they use it. So this one, <laughs> while it looks really cool, yeah. is a $200 Chinese clone. 
There you go, man. <laughs> wow. I was because you know it's, I saw it on your board and I was, I was just gonna wait for the story because yeah. I went. That's really pristine. Yeah, it's like perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, it's a pretty good. I, honestly, it's a really realistic clone, like inside and out. I don't even know if it has a brand name at all. I ordered it on eBay from a company in China. Yeah, um, there you go. And I've tried a lot of the con clones out mm -hmm. there, and this, to me, it sounds just like it. It's made with garbage parts, but just like it. I, I see. I would have thought you would have just built one. You know well, what I mean? I thought I would have thought you would have just went. Ah, this is. I can just do this. Well, to answer that question, I have. And I, <laughs> I have a pile of them in my office. Oh, but man. I really like the way this enclosure looks. So it's like, oh, yeah, okay. I have it. Why not? Oh. I got the space for it. I, even better. <laughs> even better. Wow, that's great. It's yes. an aesthetic choice at this point more than like a sound choice. But I mean, the the one that I built sounds good. Sounds sounds the same. Shall we hear it? Sure. I realize I probably could have been playing through this stuff. <laughs> talking about it. No, there's. I mean, there's a lot to go through here. So, I th but I, but yeah, it's yeah. it's interesting though because you know from from my perspective when I see a pedal board, it, it just it speaks a workflow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like and thought process and with with the way you have things set up and what's going on here, hearing something one at a time. Eh, maybe not so much because it seems like this is kind of a holistic approach. For the most part, I yeah. kind of like, I kind of leave everything like where it is for the most of yeah. like every song <laughs> and just kind of bring little little things in and out like right. here, here and there or like, you know, I'll pick a distortion or like overdrive pedal and just leave it on like the whole time for the for that that particular song. Yeah. Um, a big part of that reason is because we also have like a light show, and I control it with this like little light controller oh, next okay. to me. So it's like, what do I want to focus on? Yeah, exactly. Mm, change um, pedal, change light. Light's yeah. gonna make more difference to the show, <laughs> <Yeah>. unfortunately. <laughs> so like yeah. my, I would say like my main tone that I use all the time. Like here's what the amp just sounds like with the claw I'm running into, and in okay. nothing else. <laughs> Yeah. So, like, you know, rock and roll tone. I yeah. guess that's what yeah. that sounds like. Exactly, man. Um, and then this would kind of be my main, like, sound. Like, <laughs> just like a slightly gainier version, but enough that it, like, sustains. Yeah. And, uh, right. To me, I'm a big, like, of all things, like, I just. Van Halen, like a big Van Halen fan, and it just there's something about it that just kind of reminds me a little bit of that tone. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's got the punch, man. Yeah, it, it, man, Ed's tone always barked. It yeah, did, man. It is. It's like it's on. It's weird because it's heavy and super distorted, but and, really clean and, and super like, compressed, but yeah. still dynamic. It's like yeah. what? And, and you know, like, yeah. there's like a lot of presence to it somehow. Yeah. And like, it's immediately obvious that yeah. it's like Van Halen guitar, like, guitar sound. Uh, and that's probably just from like, you know, I, I want to say that somewhere between Van Halen and like, there's that, uh, Steve Stevens, like ray gun noise and rebel yell, like yeah. somewhere in there. That's like the first time as like a child. I was like, "What's that? That's guitar, cool." <laughs> yeah. So like that sticks with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That stuff gets kind of imprinted in your DNA, and even if it's down at the bottom, it's still there, and it may even be bass level. You know? Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's I all it's you, in there. Like I I met Steve Stevens at a guitar show in Van Nuys, California, like eight years ago. Yeah. I was getting on, or yeah, I was getting on an elevator that he got off, and like I just tried to tell him that story real quick, and he was like, "Full circle, man!" And, like walked away. <laughs> nice, <laughs> <You're> Steve Stevens. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of like my main, my main guitar sound for the most part is just like that plume, plumes and the con into the into the Model T. Um, and you're coloring it from there, basically. Yeah. It's kind of is kind of the thing. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Um, and when I want to get heavier, I use the Hizumitas most of the time. Like, it's just, it's like a, 
it's like kind of like of the same tone, so they blend well together, but it's just uh, it's just grittier sounding yeah. and a, a, yeah. lot, a lot fuller. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot more sustain, and it just kind of everything hangs together a little mm -hmm. better. You know, it's not it's not quite as articulate. And, right. Yeah. yeah. It's bass bass heavy, and usually yeah. when I'm most of the songs I use that on, I use this guitar over here, which I don't know if you can see, but uh, and that's dropped down to just D standard. Oh, through. okay. So like it, right. it really sounds a lot yeah. fuller with that. Well, and that fits with the riff thing, right? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely. Kind of, yeah, definitely. that's your you know, that's the the genius of the band is the riff thing now. Mm -hmm. So. And then the life pedal, I pretty much, you know, I gotta work this in into the set, but like the preliminary sound for it is just like somewhere that sits right between between those two. Oh, cool. So it's just kind of like a, like. <laughs> It's like kind of like a little out of control, but still like tight enough that you can do those like kind of palm beauty, yep. low bonehead riffs. Uh, yeah, and the and the low end is just gargantuan. Yeah, you know? like I like it because yeah. it sounds like it's like crumbling mountains, but right. it's like it's, it's doing just fine. Yeah, it's, it's not fine. like totally like, killing me. Yeah. I mean, look at us. We're sitting right next yeah, to it, right here, and we're right. not like I'm freaking fine. out. Yeah, I'm it's fine. It's just, I think just, anyway. <laughs> Last time we checked, in a way, we were fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, because that, I mean, that's funny, man, because it's got, a, it's got a little bit of that motorcycle rev kind of thing to yeah, it, too. Yeah, definitely, like, that, and all that riff yeah. also Especially that, that riff. That's what I was that trying, really always doing. trying to go for Ow, with it. Like, wow, wow. <laughs> mutant guitar riffs, and yeah. then, like, I like this, uh, let's see if I can do this sitting down, but, like, it's kind of like the way that the... We have the thing on the, most of the Earth Wager pedals anyway called flexi switching where you tap oh, it yeah. to be latching or you just right. hold for it to right. be momentary. And I think it sounds really cool with the octave in this in this uh, thing, which we'll see if I can do it with these boots over these pedals. Over but the pedals like, yeah, sitting down. Like, Yeah. It kind of sounds like it's a little like a whammy type effect where you yeah. kind of like fade it in. Right, right. But it is the it's the octave from that from that yeah, pedal, which is a different pedal. flavor for sure. Yeah, it definitely. It's I mean that's a, a transistor based like analog octave up, so it, you get more of like the Octavia type yeah. kind of like wild like right. Yeah, some of like the, the uh, wild squalls. Right, right. Some of that ring modulator nonsense. Yeah, you know, too, in there, like, which is great. Yeah, I mean I really like those those kind of sounds like the like. Where it just becomes just super chaotic and discordant, where it's like. stuff that everyone's like don't do that because it doesn't work and it's like it sounds really cool really. Yeah. to me anyway <laughs> yeah yeah man you know and if you need a crescendo right in your song yeah. or whatever man you need it to just kind of like peek out completely mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. It's, yeah it's great for doing doing stuff like that yeah um so yeah that's how i kind of envision using that pedal when i get to play a show again yeah. and then uh we'll check out this weirdo fuzz pedal like Let's we'll just see what, what it does. <laughs> what do we got <laughs> today? today? Let's find out. how it reacts yeah. in here. Today, yeah. <laughs> wow! Uh, yesterday, Super crush. yeah. Yesterday, when I was checking it out, it was doing these like crazy, like it sounded like microphonic tubes would like run through reverb. I was like, "What? Well, all right, that's what you're doing now." Yeah. Initially, for the longest time, it was just a really nice kind of like gated sort of like uh, like there's an old fuzz pedal, the Oka Oka Dizzy Tone. Yeah. Kinda, I mean, it's not in any way related to that circuit, right, but it kind of had that that tone to it. This yeah. like kind of nasty, like heavy, velcro-y yeah, I was going to say super zippery kind of. But it kinda. would gate 
Yeah. Like as soon as you were done, it would just yeah. cut off. It was like oh, the wow. perfect pedal. Wow. It's like, and then over the years, like it just sort of started malfunctioning in weird ways. And I was like, I'll just leave it, see what happens. Let it morph, man. Yeah. It's an experiment now, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Initially, like when it was like fully like working as intended, mm -hmm. I tried to create this as like a product for Earthquaker, and no two sounded identical. And I just gave up after like the fourth try. I was like, man, whatever. This one is great. I have it. <laughs> so <it's> fine. <laughs> and you're building it for you yeah, anyway. I guess, right? I guess that's all that matters. Yeah, that's all that matters. You built yeah. yourself a yeah. pedal. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, now, yeah, and now it's like a constantly evolving. Which yeah. is even better. Yeah, yeah, This is some, something different every time. Yeah. So, yeah, so now, okay, so I think what's probably as interesting to me as anything is how you use the Avalanche Run and the Ghost Echo with your sound and with these riffs. That's that's pretty curious to me. Man. Yeah, the uh, I kind of alternate, too, between, between these two, like... Um, I, they're just used for like added like ambience, like yeah. space yeah. in there. Like I'm not really doing like a lot of really rhythmic -y delay stuff. Like when uh -huh. I play by myself with delay a lot of times, yeah. I'm always just doing that, like bouncing the yeah. riff off the delay, like wherever right. whatever the time is. In the bands, like there's like one song where I use it to do like a little like a, just something like this. And this is not exciting at all, but it's just like <laughs> just rings through a part like that's the right. most rhythmic thing yeah. I, do, I do with the delay <laughs> um but a lot of times it's just there to kind of add like kind of a vibe behind behind a riff that's like usually something like high up on the neck single notes like um i'll play it one like <laughs> So, so just basically using it to like, uh, basically using it to kind of beef up single note runs. And yeah, just, just kind, kind of, of just to add just yeah. some like echo, echo behind behind everything. And sometimes like I can get away with like the repeats and like all the rhythmic elements mm -hmm. of a delay, mm -hmm. but then sometimes like the ghost echo with the with the attack, which is like a little bit of a pre-delay to it, yeah. has enough of the character of a delay, but like it doesn't get in the way. Like all, all because the, you don't hear tick, 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 repeat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like the difference between like, like. <laughs> It's like our most lo-fi reverb. Like we have, <laughs> yeah. we have so many more like clear, like kind of pristine, and quite honestly, interesting reverbs to like play yeah. with. But there's something about this one that I just love. Yeah, man. Well, it's got that like. I just when you fell off that note, just all that clang. Yeah, that it's like, you know, you know, it, do, it really great, does man. kind of sound. It sounds like a cheap spring. Like it, it sounds somewhere between like those old realistically like those garbagey like, you know, dawn. Mm -hmm. and, like solid state technology, yeah. like realistic reverbs. Yeah. And a real reverb, right. like somehow, like some <laughs> yeah. somewhere in there. But like just enough where like to me, like you see even with that off, like no distortion, like <laughs> Perfect lo-fi reverb for guitar. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like in that guitar voicing sort of thing, mm -hmm. where you just want that really gritty, kind of dirty sort of like vibe. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's yeah. great, man. I have the depth up pretty high on yeah. this too right now. Usually sure. I'll kind of back it off, but yeah, it just does some interesting stuff. Yeah. I feel like. Um, Something else that I mean the 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 Death by Audio Space Bender is kind, yeah. kind of new in the chain and it fills that role a little bit okay. too I yeah. feel like 
Um, I love Death by Audio. It's like my favorite, favorite pedal company. Cool. Uh, Plug for Death by Audio. Yeah, nice, yeah, man. I, I love, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm like, you know, they're great people, too. I, you know, I've talked a lot about them. I'm yeah. a big fan. I'm a yeah. fanboy of Death by Audio, but I've never really had any other pedals on my pedal board. I'll play with them a lot at home and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but this one, like, something about it, like, really, really grabbed me. Like, it's just, it seems like it fits in with, like, how, how, I, how I like to play. Yeah. Um, and I kind of, I'm still in, like, the learning phase of, like, figuring out where, where it sits and everything, but, like, it's, it does some really cool stuff, I feel like. like <laughs> Cool. That like modulation is yeah, nuts. When you hit that like, first note, I was like, "What in the yeah. world?" <laughs> it's like part like seasicky kind of chorus, part yeah, delay, part yeah. reverb. A little bit of, I mean, and with, with that speed, it's almost Leslie sounding because you hear that dollar, yeah, that bop, yeah. bop, 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 kind of thing going. That's totally. cool, man. Yeah, yeah, it can go like wild too. Yeah. But like I don't know, tamed in, like kind of have it. Uh, Tamed down. Oh yeah, that's real that's conservative the sounding. Using for? Yeah. Conservative, conservative, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Conservative. Yeah, that's conservative. <laughs> to me, it, it kind of there's oh, something about man. it too that kind of reminds me of like old Susie and the Banshees, something like that. Yeah, like yeah, kind of a that's atmosphere great, to it. Um, and Grand Orbiter and Rainbow Machine, you're you know two of your like uh, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, like yeah, main, really, mainstay like yeah. flagship pedals, especially the Rainbow Machine, very polarizing pedal it, it for, for people. You either, it, you either know or you don't. Right, that's how yeah. that works, man. <laughs> you either know or you don't. I use it for. Uh, I, I think I talk about this a lot, but like you know, it's kind of a wild. It's, you know, it, I guess it does fall in line, like we were talking earlier about all the octave and pitch shifting pedals, yeah, but yeah. That would kind of be like its primary, like obvious use, but the chorus that it makes is just, it's really nice, yeah. really nice sounding yeah, like chorus is, pedal. Man. And that's kind of how I leave it set. Just like. <laughs> Man, I know oh, having that option is just yeah. great. That's one of the <laughs> funnest things about that pedal, man. That's great. Yeah, and that's kind of like one of my, you know, between leaving it like a chorus like that, I use it just for that takeoff yeah. kind of thing. It, yeah. It's great for the intro to any guitar solo. It makes you sound like you're really doing something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, <laughs> launching. Yeah, I'm just revving up. Oh man, mm -hmm. what a board. It's something. A, it is, man. What a set of sounds, and what a like a. a uh, I mean, you've got so many tones available, and so many tones available like at the touch of a button. That's mm -hmm. the other thing is it's like everything is discrete, individually set. It's set one way, and you turn it off or on. Yeah, you know? yeah, and like you know, even with the Swiss things here, I could still yeah. kind of like build little groups of things yeah. if I wanted to, right. so I could bring those those sounds in and out. And then like to me, like there's just enough fun. Like I didn't really show too much about the octave pedals, but that's like the fun part yeah. of the board. It's like just enough there to like make it interesting. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, if I want to drive somebody crazy, then I can just do like, <laughs> like just those horrible, like, <laughs> so be Jack White or something. Like, yeah, exactly. that's immediately what that sounded like to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Tomarello Jack White yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, it's great, man. Jamie, man, good luck, man, with the yes. band. That's great. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I hope you guys, man, I, w I want to see this thing in action. Yeah, hopefully we'll start playing again. Yeah, no, no kidding, man. No kidding. <laughs> No Come kid. out here. <laughs> there you go. I'm play a you picnic or something out here. <laughs> Let's know go to, uh, next go time the foreigners studio. out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm excited to start playing, playing, yeah. playing shows again. It's been kind of hard to 
to do it. Like even when things started opening back up, like we all got sick again. It's like, ah, we just gotta wait. So. Man, and then and then the other thing is everybody was an- so anxious yeah, to get yeah. back out that yeah. everybody was back out. Yeah, it's so true. It's it yeah. true. It was, it, was, it, was just, it was even harder. I mean, yeah, got you know, if you're, yeah, if you if you don't already have like a regular, you know, touring or playing or gigging schedule, man, it, it, hard to jump back in the middle of that. Yeah, definitely, totally, definitely. It's been rough. Well, cool, man. Well, no, no, this is, but this is the new start, man. This is yeah, it. this is it. This is you gotta you gotta call the you gotta call the guys. It's like, hey, dudes, <laughs> here we go. We got a pedal board now. I might be the problem now. They gotta call me. <laughs> but at least I'm showing them now. Look, look I tried. I'm trying. Seriously, <laughs> seriously, I got a road case. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, we'll see where this board is at in like a yeah. week. I'm yeah. already looking at it like maybe I need to move these things around. Okay, uh, well, you might have to call back with an update. Then. Yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, so we changed this and we moved that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send out some photos. <laughs> yeah. I'll report great. back from camp. Jamie, man, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank Thanks you so much. Me. This is super fun, man. This is yeah. I just love the look inside. This is like the look inside the mind of, right? Yeah, my that, Sunday man. morning mind. That's yeah, this, this, is, this like. is where your head's at. This is where your head's at. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any questions about most of the stuff that Jamie has on his board, except for the, you know, the prototypes, you can't have those. But um, most of the stuff you have on Jamie's board, just make sure to contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or check out Sweetwater.com. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.